Today we will be discussing about science, law and forensic science part 2. The learning objectives are to learn about the role of forensic science in the criminal justice system, to learn about their relationship between for science, legal system and forensic science. During any crime investigation, the evidences are collected from crime scene, analyzed scientifically in the forensic science laboratory according to the requirement of investigating officer and the reports are presented before the court of law. Each crime scene is unique and each case presents varied challenges in the laboratory, complex cases may sometimes involve multiple forensic experts having different background in biology, physics, chemistry and other disciplines. These forensic scientists analyze evidences sometimes separately in a particular case. For example, one of the forensic examiner might be developing latent fingerprints, forensic biologist might be comparing hair and other fibers under the microscope. And another scientist might be identifying a white powder that was collected from the scene. The investigator will then combine all the examiner's report and prepare a case. Now it is the duty of both scientist and the court to ensure that maximum effort should be made to ensure that a jury must understand the competence and the limitations of the science presented to him. The scientist must be able to convey complex of subject in such a simpler form that it become easy to understand. Only then the lawyers and the judges can appreciate the value of scientifically analyzed physical evidences and reach to a secure and informed decision. Let us learn about the law and legal systems. When we have to live together and we are interested in the formation of society, disputes are inevitable. To resolve these issue, perhaps we need to have a framework of code of conduct to maintain our relationship with others. Even from primitive times, history has been locked with accounts of different codes or laws. In the history of law in many societies, we can discern the same evolution taking place moreover in the same sequence. For conducting human affairs, people were regulating their affairs and relationships in a rather systematic manner by designing laws and legal system which were based either on their religion or purely secular. Let us learn about this in a given table. This table shows the historical evolution of law in various societies. First, people live in family unites with the rule by the patriarch. Second, the apatriarchal sovereign who is usually heroic issues ruling in individual cases after the fact. Third, customary law grow up from the sovereign's rule. Fourth, a legal code is created. This code bears on relationships between families or between the patriarchs of the families. Fifth, the code begins to bear on individuals rather than families. Sixth, more relationships are defined by contracts, that is, a movement from status to contract. Presently, we are accustomed to a legal system with voluminous codes and well-defined procedures for contracts. Many of these were mentioned don't sound like much of a legal system to normal ears. But for most of the existence humans, the following are the systems they lived under. The first one is the patriarch. In the historical evolution of law, 
according to the earliest ever records available in the observation of more primitive cultures the earliest stage of development is characterized by people living in small groups these groups were based on kingship and ruled by the eldest male mostly the ruler was chosen by the very strict customs of descent through the eldest son from the original ancestor often this rule was quite complete and always includes property earnings and contract this was entirely at the caprice of the patriarch with the rule having none of what we would think of as rights but it is a customary responsibility of the patriarch to provide for his family the males after attaining the age of maturity could free themselves from the rule of their father and even start their own patriarchy next is sovereign later on they develop a sovereign ruling over a grouping of families this rule is in the same style as of the patriarch he issues rulings after the fact and without reference to any established rules primitive man at this stage suppose that gods themes to the greek dedicated to king what to award the name of the award was themesis here important to note that these are not laws but pronounced judgments the pattern of themes helps in creating a custom which is opposite to the theory that the laws embody the customs of previous era next is customary law the early kings were heroic but often feebler monarchs followed often an oligarchy would grow up around the monarch these aristocrats mostly became the depository and administrators of law this was the epoch of customary law english common law pretends to be of this type at one time the judge relied on the rules principles but lawyers and the public were not fully aware about these distinctions but today all this is based on written precedents next we have a legal code finally a legal code has been written down this happened just after the invention of writing quite often the initial codes were mixed of civil religious and moral issues but at last we have arrived at a stage where the legal system becomes recognizable in most of the cases the flavor of the initial code in the form of earlier patriarchal era and primarily deals with the relationships between the families or between the patriarchs of the families was retained it was only after 800 in english history when king alfred the great declared that the law would be present in our return so that people could know about the law related to the fact first date the beginning of liberty and revolution from this point next is individuals in the next stage the legal code started dealing with individuals rather than just the patriarch it even begins to regulate the relations within the family next we will learn about the contractual relationships finally the relationships within a legal system begin to be determined more and more by contracts than by status of actors the most obvious is employment which becomes a matter of contract between two parties rather than master and slave this process can be observed in historical times and is still continuing today now let us discuss about the present legal system which operate under many different forms of governments the laws in effect at any given time are usually influenced by or derived from those of earlier period the relationships activities among people of a society are also subject to certain rules and regulations 
government keeps regulating those activities which influence our daily life most closely. The other activities regarded as contentary to the collective interest or the generally accept moral code and conduct has to be barred by laws. The existing government or authority then provides sanctions against those who engaged in forbidden activities. In a general way, criminal codes governs activities in which society as a whole has an interest and civil code tend to manage relations among the individuals or groups. The distinction between criminal and civil matters depends upon the social and historical context of the society. Who has created these laws, legal structure prevalent at particular times are always reflections of a particular type of societies. Without any exception, however, the dynamics of their operation represent a human activity that depends on decision making. Legal decision making is nearly always wasted in some kind of court or tribunal. Courts and legal system cannot anticipate every possible circumstance under which disputes will arise between people or within the state. The function of the courts or tribunals, therefore, is to make decent judgments in particular cases. They try to apply the general principles of the legal code to the particular circumstances of a given situation. To exercise their function responsibly, courts have always sought ways to ascertain the facts surrounding a particular case. The relationship between law and science had developed out of a common interest in factual information. Although the concept of scientific fact and legal fact are often quite different, the application of scientific method can often provide factual information that is relevant to a legal proceeding and would not be available without the intervention of science. Next is relevance of forensic evidence in trial. Though there is no denial of the importance of forensic science in contributing towards delivery justice system, certain limitation of existing legal system tend to make it a subject of discussion. The limitation of being an adversarial system of justice. The judges and lawyers possess inadequate scientific knowledge, a must for comprehending and evaluating forensic evidence, for curing the documented ills of the forensic science disciplines. This is of great importance as forensic science is but the handmaiden of the legal system. There are some serious issues regarding the competence and quality of the current forensic science system. Yet, the courts continue to rely on the forensic evidence without fully understanding and addressing the limitation of different forensic science disciplines. This profound combination of law and science, especially in the context of law enforcement, emphasizes the need for improvement in the forensic science community. Next, we will learn about the forensic science. In definition of forensic science, it is the application of scientific methods or techniques to law or legal system, which is expected to help in answering the questions of interest to a legal system in relation to either civil or criminal action. Next is the necessity of forensic science in criminal investigation. This is a great need to use of forensic science in investigation of a crime in the modern times. In India, the investigation of crime and prosecution of persons having committed the crime are not up to the mark. Still, large percentage of heinous crimes, the criminals could not be prosecuted properly and some percentage of trials and in acquittal. Because of this, the number of criminals and crimes are increasing every day. 
the absolute investigation techniques have many loopholes might be one of the reason for these frequent acquittals further with the increasing awareness the establishment of international human right commission the third degree method is no longer acceptable for criminal investigation to the modern generation which include judges and public at large of course the third degree methods for making confessions have not completely vanished from our country but their misuse has increased thus there is an urgent need to use scientific techniques for effective crime investigation the term forensic science is sometimes used as synonym for criminalistics both these terms encompasses a diverse range of activities forensic science can also be defined in a wider perspective to include fingerprint examinations forensic biology anthropology including forensic medicine odontology psychiatry forensic chemistry and toxicology question documents examination and also include firearm tool mark examination and criminalistics as well criminalistic is a discipline of forensic science which is concerned with the recognition identification individualization and evaluation of physical evidence by using the methods and techniques of natural sciences in matters of legal significance it includes all the areas of trace evidence examination and forensic chemistry it also includes the reconstruction of events based on physical evidence analysis different forensic scientists would define the scope of the field differently some would include firearm and tool mark examination and question documents as a part of criminalistic despite the implications of the name criminalistic activities are not limited to criminal matters they are also used in civil law cases and in regulatory matters as well people who are engaged in criminalistics as a profession are called criminalist regardless of the title criminalist or forensic scientist both are active participant in the criminal justice system the major speciality areas includes in the wider definition of forensic science are described briefly first is forensic biology and seriology forensic biology division help in the identification of all the biological materials including plants and animals whereas per the definition of seriology it is the study of serum and allied body fluids forensic seriology division receives the sample of blood and physiological fluids which are examined for the purpose of identification and individualization the type of material collected from crime scene or from articles of physical evidence are identified and compared with the specimen provided in some of the laboratories the dna unit work as a separate division next is dna testing in the early years of dna testing the courts mostly concerned its reliability as evidence but in the last few years however dna technology has made significant progress to become more discriminating methods the dna profiling has revolutionized the forensic identification and criminal justice system by providing the court as a reliable mean to identify the perpetrator with a high degree of confidence present day dna evidence analysis is much more proficient in exonerating wrongfully convicted defendants and can play significant role in assuring a fundamentally fair criminal justice system next we have forensic anthropology forensic anthropology is a branch of science 
which deals with the personal identification based on bodily measurements and particularly skeletal remain. Practitioners are called physical anthropologists who are interested in forensic problems. Other areas of forensic anthropology include generation of databases by measuring different bodily structures and finding relationship to identify sex, age, race, stature, or so forth. Next one is forensic medicine, which is also known to be legal medicine or medical jurisprudence. It is the application of medicine and medical science to solve the legal problems. The practitioners of forensic medicine are medical doctors with specialty certification in pathology or in forensic pathology. They conduct post-mortem of the bodies brought by police are concerned with determining the cause and circumstances in case of questioned death. They also became involved in matters related to insurance claim and sometime in cases of medical malpractices. Next is forensic odontology. It is also called forensic dentistry. It is the application of dentistry to human identification problems. Forensic odontologists are dentists who specialize in the forensic aspects of their field. They are concerned with the identification of persons based upon their dentition, usually in cases of otherwise unrecognizable bodies or in mass disasters. They also analyze and compare bite mark evidence in many types of cases. Next is forensic chemistry and toxicology. Forensic chemistry and toxicology has to do with the determination of toxic substances present in human tissues and organs. Much of the work concerned with the role toxic chemicals might have played in causing or contributing to the death of a person. Next is criminalistic. Criminalistics include all the areas of trace and transfer of evidence such as glass and soil, fibers and hairs, blood and physiological fluids. It also includes arson, accelerated and explosive residues, drug identification and the interpretation of different patterns and imprint. It is the broadest of the subdivisions of forensic science. Next is question document. Question document examination includes comparison and interpretation of handwriting, mechanically produced material such as typing or printing, and photocopied material, analysis of papers, inks, and other material used to produce documents may also be included. Firearm and tool mark examination has to do with firearm identification, comparison of marking present on bullets and other projectiles, cartridge cases and shell cases, especially for the purpose of determining that a bullet may have been fired from a particular weapon. Tool mark examination are concerned with the association of particular impressions with particular tool. Fingerprint examination is concerned with the classification of fingerprint and the organization of set print into usable file. Development of latent prints and comparison of known and unknown fingerprints are a part of work as well. Fingerprint identification has been admissible as reliable evidence in criminal tire in criminal trials in our country since 1911. Some of the forensic science activities can be classified under more than one of the major subdivision mentioned. Tool mark comparison, for example, are sometimes considered part of criminalistic and sometimes as a part of separate firearms and tool mark speciality.
Similarly, here comparison is usually considered as a part of criminalistic, but it could just as well as considered as a part of forensic biology or anthropology. Any classification scheme for all the different activities is therefore somewhat arbitrary. One person can't be expert in all sciences and their methods and it is for this reason that forensic science contains the subspecialties developed around a particular type of physical evidence or around a particular group of methods and procedures. Some forensic scientists are generalists. They have broad training and experience in most of the basic areas of criminalistic, can carry out a variety of different physical evidence examination knowledgeably, or more importantly, refer specific aspects of a case to specialist. But according to Daubert, there are certain important differences between the quest for truth in the laboratory and the quest for truth in the courtroom. Scientific conclusions are not exclusive and are subject to continuous modification. On the other hand, it is the duty of the jury to resolve dispute finally and at the earliest. In criminal cases, accused are convicted on the basis of testimony from forensic science expert. Therefore, more depends upon the reliability and accuracy of the techniques used to analyze evidence and the report presented before the court of law. To sum up, the modern scientific methods for investigation of crimes are very much necessary in order to make criminal justice system very effective to fight against crime and combating terrorism. Researchers and practitioners of forensic science must appreciate the value of scientific evidence and help in increasing its importance to the criminal justice system. This will enhance the efficiency of law enforcement agencies. The module started with the discussion on the law and legal system and its requirement to maintain the relationship among the people of any society. There is a need to frame code of code and conduct and the sequence of historical evolution of law in various societies have been elaborated in detail. To conduct the investigation of any crime, there is an urgent need to use scientific techniques for effective contribution of forensic science to the criminal justice system. Forensic science is a multi-speciality and sub-speciality science. The major speciality areas include a wider definition of forensic science and are discussed in detail in this module and to appreciate the scope of forensic science.